Hello, everyone. My name is Danielle ruger -Murowski. I am the Associate Director of Partnerships at Parker Dewey. I'm very excited to talk to you today about how you can use Parker Dewey Micro Internships, the short-term paid professional projects, to be able to engage your employers and help them address whatever unique challenges they may be facing. Um, so going to hop in now to first talk about... Oh, hey, Annie, how's it going? <laughs> some of those challenges that your companies are coming to you with. Um, so these are just a few things that we've been hearing. You know, if companies are coming to you saying, you know, I'm, I'm coming to your events, but I was hoping to reach some different demographics, or I want to reach students from majors that maybe weren't there, or, you know, I'm an alumni and I want to engage students from my alma mater. I love my alma mater, but it's just not somewhere my company recruits. You know, any of these things um, take solace in the fact that you are not alone in these challenges. We're hearing them from a few different companies, and we've kind of broken them down to hearing these things repeatedly. So these are the things that you're seeing in that poll. Again, if you haven't taken it already, we'd love for you to take a look at it. But again, they ended up there. They ended up on the screen because this is what we are hearing consistently from companies. Um, so some are struggling with budgets. They just don't have the budget line to be able to compensate traditional internships or some of those traditional methods or maybe even to get to all the different career fairs they'd want to get to. Um, some of them just don't have the bandwidth. They're short staffed. They're struggling to meet the demands of everything that's on their plate, much less finding time to supervise a traditional intern for a full semester. Some of them are just not getting applications. They've got some great opportunities. They're paid even and in areas that your students are interested in, but for some reason, they're just not seeing the applications that they want to. Um, some of them want to be able to engage students earlier to build that pipeline, to build those relationships. And some of them are coming to you saying, your students just don't know who we are. We want them to, but they either don't know us about, know about us, period, or they have preconceived notions about what we do and what types of opportunities we have. Uh, other companies still are coming to our partners and saying, you know, we want to reach specific demographics. That seems to be a heavy felt one uh, in today's group with nearly 40% of you so far saying companies are coming to you saying we want to reach some students who are going to be able to bring some diverse perspectives to our organizations, to our companies, and we're just struggling to find that talent. We know your institution has it, but we're having trouble reaching it. And then there are others still who might be struggling with uh, conversion retention, maybe they've made offers, maybe those offers have even been accepted, and then that rain egg comes and we're back to square one. So again, you are not alone if you're experiencing these challenges, but the good news is that Parker Dewey Micro Internships can help with all of these. Um, so to explain how, uh, first going to do a little bit of a recap. Now we are going to get into specific employer engagement efforts. So if this is a recap for some of you, thank you for your patience, but want to make sure everyone is on the same page, both about what micro internships are, as well as what they are not. So right out of the gate, we want to make it clear, this is not a long-term commitment. So for those of you who said, you know, our Partners are coming to us and saying, we just don't have the bandwidth. 13% uh, of you said you're hearing that from folks. This is not a long-term commitment. Um, I see I've got a comment in the chat already. What is Parker Dewey doing to promote their platform to employers? We are going to talk about some of those resources during this webinar, and we're going to highlight how you can also invite your employers, in addition to the engagement efforts we're doing, to those events. So I appreciate the question. Um, but right out the gate, again, not a long-term commitment. These projects are typically 10 to 40 hours in total. So they are something specific. You know, maybe a company needs someone to create an email marketing campaign. Maybe they need someone to go through some data. Maybe they need someone to do some research on something specific. These are not long-term supervisory commitments. These are the micro interns going to get the details and they're going to do this project for me. Typically only 10 to 40 hours in total. These can be done at any time of year. And we encourage you, if at all possible, to post your project as remote. So that's going to allow that micro intern the flexibility to work from wherever they have a Wi-Fi connection while still meeting your project deadline. These are also super easy. So if you're not already familiar, quick reminder that Parker Dewey, we actually act as the employer of record for every single micro internship. And this is super appealing to companies because what that means is they don't have to deal with getting payroll information. They don't have to deal with processing payroll. They don't have to deal with tax forms. So they can create that account, no cost, no obligation. They can post that project, no cost, no obligation. 
only once they've selected their micro intern, one of your talented students or recent graduates, are they invoiced for the total cost of that project. And then they pay Parker Dewey and we take care of all that administration stuff from there. So what that means is this is not a heavy lift for companies. This is not a heavy lift for hiring managers. It's super easy, and that makes it super appealing. It's also a great way to reach those different demographics. Um, so it looks like 44% of you have now have said that employers are coming to us saying we want to reach certain demographics, and we're having a hard time reaching them. And when you look at what students are able to do, um, there are reasons why they're struggling. You know, those students who are from non-traditional backgrounds, first-generation backgrounds, maybe they're a student athlete, you know, they have work obligations, family obligations, practice schedules that make some of those traditional recruiting efforts not accessible. You know, they may not always have the time or the transportation or the ability to go to those career fairs, to make time for information sessions, to do unpaid opportunities, but the short-term paid remote process projects are accessible to any student, regardless of how busy their schedule is, regardless of what other obligations they have, regardless of where they live. And that's why we see that over 80% of the students and recent graduates selected for Parker Dewey Micro Internships come from students who are in these underrepresented populations in the workforce. And this is a way for companies to do this without it being cost prohibitive. Because these are such short-term experiences, most micro-internships are only a few hundred dollars, which most companies, even nonprofits, can easily find in the budget. So for those of you who said our partners are struggling with budget constraints, they just don't have big lines of funding, even small bits, a few hundred dollars here and there can allow them to engage. And it looks like 44% of you said our companies struggle with budgets. So this is a really cost-effective way for them to make things work. And 90% of what they're spending is going to that student or recent graduate. We're only retaining 10%, and that is what allows us to make this really easy for folks. And it's a great way to accomplish those longer term goals. We're going to cover some success stories and some examples, but we've seen companies who have used this to engage talent earlier. Those first or second year students may not be ready for a traditional internship, but they're ready for those short term projects. We've seen companies use this as a way to audition talent for a longer term role, whether it's a traditional internship or a full time opportunity. This gives them an effective way to see, is this person a good fit without having to jump right into that commitment and then realize, ooh, that may have been a mistake. Stake. Um, that's stated. We also want to make it clear micro internships aren't a replacement for traditional internship programs or anything that y'all are already doing. But for those students who are struggling to engage in the traditional methods and those companies that really want to engage that talent but are struggling to for some of the reasons we've already highlighted, this is a great way to get the conversations, the relationships, the experience starting to build. So now that we have defined uh, what micro internships are as well as what they're not, I also want to highlight some of the benefits for companies in using these. Um, now we're going to get to some specific action points like was asked in the chat, like what can I invite my employers to? What are some specific things to do? So we're still just laying the ground with context right now. Um, but one of the outcomes that we think y'all will find exciting, being mostly our partners and in educational institutions, is micro internships help reduce the likelihood of under and unemployment after graduation. You all know this is a chronic problem. We're seeing this in higher education. We're seeing this from recent college graduates. More than any of us would like are facing under or unemployment. We are seeing those who have completed micro internships, who have taken this opportunity to be able to start building connections, building awareness, figuring out where their talents fit, are significantly less likely to encounter that struggle. And we're also seeing that those who have completed micro internships are likely to stay in their first full time role for longer than a year. And I imagine most of you are familiar. We're seeing that more than half of recent graduates overall are leaving before that 12 month mark. They are getting into their first role. And then in less than 12 months, less than a year, they're realizing, "Ooh, this wasn't the fit I thought it was going to be. Alternatively, with recent graduates who've completed micro internships, we're seeing over 98% of that time, they're staying in that first full-time role for longer than a year. And we attribute that to the fact that they're using these micro internships to figure out where am I going to be able to successfully have a start to my career? Now, sometimes they get into that project and they realize, ooh, 
I thought this was where I wanted to be, but I'm seeing even in this short project, this isn't the fit I thought it was. And that allows them to take that information and find somewhere that is going to be a better fit. It saves both sides time and it saves companies money because they don't have to turn right around in less than a year and start the recruitment efforts for that role all over again. Alternatively, sometimes students are starting a micro internship, not because they know anything about the company, not because they're interested in that point at working with that company or at that company long term, but because they're looking at the project. They're saying, ooh, I know how to do this. This project is interesting to me. So they apply, they get the micro internship, and in the process of working on that project, they're learning about the company, they're making connections, they're building relationships with their micro internship supervisor, and they're going, you know, I'd never heard of this place, but this actually is somewhere I could see myself starting the career, and the company is getting to see that same thing, so they're making that match. And it's a super cost-effective way for companies to do all these things. You know, traditional campus recruiting can get rather expensive rather quickly. And again, this isn't a replacement for any things, but there are some things that you could probably cut back a little bit, and that allows for some significant savings while still getting these great results. Companies also like it because it's a great way to access a wide range of talent. You know, as established, budget constraints are real. 45, we're seeing some more people engage in the poll. 45% of you said, Companies are coming to us saying, we have limited funds. They just can't make it to every single career fair, but they want to engage your students. Well, all of your students can be on the Parker Dewey platform. And since it's remote, even from anywhere, they can engage in these projects. Again, it's a great way to reach diverse talent. Over 80% of selected micro interns are from those historically underrepresented populations. And it's great because they're also, while doing all of these other things, getting on-demand project support. Because over 98% of the time, your students and recent graduates are impressing them. They are either meeting or exceeding these expectations. So taking one step back, I know I already showed this slide, but just a reminder, these are all these challenges that folks are facing, but this is how micro-internships help with each one of those. For those who are struggling with the budget constraints, it's easy and cost-effective. For those who don't have bandwidth, this is no commitment, it's low risk, it's short term. For those who are short staffed, they just need some help for their current team. Maybe you don't have longer term hiring goals at this minute. That's okay. This is a way to get on demand help from students who are just excited to start building experience. For those who are having trouble building interest or awareness of roles, this is a great way to have them look at the project, the kind of work that's needed for those roles, and get into their heads and start connecting with them that way. For those of you who are struggling with building a talent pipeline or your partners are struggling with building a talent pipeline, this allows them to reach talent earlier instead of waiting until junior or senior year for that traditional internship. For those who are struggling to build awareness, it's a great way to build brand. It's a great way, again, because they're focused on the project to kind of slide in there and have them realize, oh, this company is actually really cool too. And because of its accessibility, it is huge for accessing new demographics. And if you happen to be an alumni of an institution, you really want to engage, maybe you don't work in recruiting, but you know, you're, you have alumni who still want to engage those students, this is a great way for them to be able to connect, even if the company they work for doesn't officially recruit at your institution. And it works because it's set up to also meet the needs of the students you're currently working with. Um, so I'm going to take a look at our poll results right now. I'll go ahead and share so other folks can see what we're seeing. Looks like the com most commonly felt issues today, we've got a tie between companies are telling you we're just short staffed. We need help. And folks saying we have limited student awareness. We want to build our brand and some just struggling to reach target demographics. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick on limited student awareness. For those of you who are having your companies, your partners say, we want students to know who we are. Here's just one example. And when you get these slides, you'll be able to click in for examples for each of these challenges. This is Jessica Tardy. She was a recent graduate and she was very focused on finding the role that was going to be right for her at this stage in her career. She didn't just want a job. She wanted a place where she was going to be able to really effectively launch her career. So she hopped on Parker Dewey and she said, you know what, this is a good way for me to build some experience, get a little bit of extra pay while I'm doing that job search. And while she was on the platform, she saw a project and she said, I had no idea who the company was. The company was Fleet Core. She said, I chose that opportunity because I knew how to do data analysis. I like doing data analysis. It was a way to get more experience and more money. And in the course of the micro internship, she realized, ooh, 
this is actually a cool company. I had never heard of them, but I like the vibe I'm getting here. I like my supervisor. And this was a quality candidate. You know, Jessica ended up getting multiple offers. And one of those included an offer from Fleet Corps because they saw how great she did on their micro internship project. They said, this is a quality candidate. This is someone we want to join our team. And so faced with all these offers, you can probably guess what Jessica did. She chose Fleet Corps, the company she had never heard of before her micro internship. And she said straightforward, her micro internship played a role in that decision. The fact that she got to have that experience, connect with some of the team. So this is just one example. Again, for those of you who said, you know, we've got partners, we've got employers who are coming to us. They want to build their brand. You can see how Jessica went from, I have no idea who this company is, to now being so excited to be a part of their organization. Um, so for all of these challenges, gonna start with the first specific action item that y'all can do is to download this Where Micro Internships Fit for Employers flyer. So this, and I'm gonna put this in the chat if you need it or just wanna send it to yourself right now. Where am I fit? Breaks down some of these challenges we're talking about also highlights how micro internships help with each of these challenges and with real quotes from students makes it clear this isn't hypothetical it isn't wouldn't it be nice it isn't what if it really is appealing and accessible to students and accordingly they engage and that engagement is what is going to allow your companies when using micro internships to address all of these unique challenges uh, this is also just a nice one to have at the ready when you're having employers visit if you're going on employer visits when you're having conversations because the second page also highlights all those frequently asked questions about micro internships and how they work. You can also customize this flyer if you want to put the QR code to your own unique company facing landing page. And if you don't have one yet, we're going to talk about that during this presentation too. Um, so we're going to talk about these specific ways now that you can use micro internships now that we've done a little bit of that familiarizing to engage your employers to help them accomplish those challenges that we've seen in the poll that we've been talking about so far. Uh, so that first step, familiarizing yourself with Parker Dewey by familiarizing yourself means you also have resources that you can then share with these companies who are coming to you with these challenges. So as promised, the very first way to familiarize yourself to have something at the ready is an employer-focused landing page. Now, these are part of our no-cost partnerships. Um, if you're on this call, typically you're an already a partner, but if you are not, Parker Dewey partnerships are no cost to educational institutions. They are designed to make it easy for you to spread the word about Parker Dewey micro internships to both your students and recent graduates, as well as the companies whose needs are really going to be supported and met by these short-term experiences. So what you see in the chat right here is an example of our updated, not in the chat, but on the screen, our updated landing page layout. Um, some of you may already have a landing page layout that looks a little bit more like this. As you can see, we've made some updates. It's just a little bit cleaner, a little bit more modern. It's got a little bit more in the way of resources and details. And it also gives some example micro internship projects. So once companies create their account, again, absolutely no cost to create in a Parker Dewey account. It takes like five minutes. It's super easy. Then they can easily post any of these micro internship templates if one of these happens to meet their needs. If they do not, they're also welcome to post a custom micro internship project. And we also have tips for them as that as well. A reminder that it really only needs to meet two criteria. And one is, is it professional? Is the project requiring some level of skill or knowledge that a student is building in a degree program, even if it's in their first or second year? So to be clear, a micro internship isn't going to be, you know, I need someone to hand out flyers on a street corner. That's not a micro internship. It's going to involve some of those professional skills that they're building in your educational programs. And the second thing is, is there a specific deliverable? You know, are they creating a campaign? Are they handing me a spreadsheet with pros and cons for things I've asked them to research? What is the specific deliverable that is going to indicate this project is complete? So for example, you're not going to see a micro internship that says, I need someone to man the front desk on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2.30 to 4.30. It's not a specific deliverable. So this page gives them those examples. It gives them those posting tips. If they have questions, we've got resources, and we're going to talk about these more in a minute. And it's got those FAQs as well. 
And if they still have questions, it also makes it very easy for them to connect with us. So we can answer these questions, we can walk them through how to post, making it super simple. Um, so we're gonna have, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and launch that poll now. So if you want to have any of these things as we're talking about them, feel free to go ahead and click on them and make sure you submit at the end. Um, but one of the options for next steps that you can do after having attended this webinar is to have an employer-focused landing page made. If you want one of these pages, please click that. Wait to submit until we've finished the entire presentation because you might want some other things done too. Um, or if you already have a version of this page and it looks like this and you want it updated to look like the new one, go ahead and hit that first option as well. We can get that updated for you so you've got that newer, cleaner look. Uh, the next thing is another flyer option. This is a company-focused flyer. Uh, so again, when you get these slides afterwards, everyone's going to get these. You'll be able to access the template. You can update this. But what this flyer does is explain to companies what micro-internships are and how it benefits them, but very briefly. It's not quite as in the weeds as that other where micro-internships fit flyer, but it still gives perspectives from all three sides of this, from the university perspective, from the employer perspective, from the student perspective, why these work, why these are effective, and also give some examples of companies that are a little bit more recognizable that have used micro-internships to accomplish those goals. So if you feel like you've got companies who might just want like a very overarching overview, maybe that where micro-internships fit is a little bit too in the weeds for them, this is another great option to customize and have on hand. Something else we encourage y'all to have at the ready is these employer success stories. Because we all know that there are some companies out there who maybe just don't want to be the first to do something. They want to see examples first. How have other companies done this? How have other companies used this? What pain points have companies used this to address? And hey, there's nothing wrong with wanting some examples, and we've got them to share. So putting these in the chat, again, you'll get them all afterwards as well. But these employer testimonials make it really easy for you to be able to say to your partner companies who are considering this, this is how other companies have done it already. You don't have to pioneer this. You can use this to accomplish your unique goals too. And there really are a variety of pain points represented here. You know, Microsoft used micro internships to see, you know, can we make sure that students are aware? It's not just coding opportunities at Microsoft. We've got all these other departments. So they used it to break through preconceived notions. There are other companies who were startups who said, we don't have the ability to do longer term hiring right now. We just have needs here and there. This is a super effective way to help us get off the ground, like GrandPad. Then there are other companies like Smith & Nephew who wanted to build a pipeline for their entry-level roles. They posted a micro-internship. They selected like six or seven candidates who were about to graduate, who were recently graduated, had them do a presentation on their existing products. And then the ones who did a great job, they were able to extend offers to. And the students, because they learned about Smith & Nephew in this project, were significantly more likely to accept, they were excited, they had already started building connections than if they had just put out a job post and hoped that folks applied to it. So again, lots of different examples. And then we also have a supervisor checklist. So if you have, again, those folks who said, we don't have time, we don't have bandwidth, you can share this as an example to highlight, this is not a big time commitment. You know, we do want you to have at least one kickoff meeting with the student. They want to connect with you. They want to get to know you. They want to build that relationship. But after that, it's up to you how you engage. It could be emails. It could be short Zoom calls. But this isn't like a traditional commitment where it's, you know, these days of the week, every single week, you have to have things for them to do. All you need to do is determine what are the projects that you have on your plate right now. And then this guide also helps you make sure that you're setting them up with all the details that they need to have a positive experience. So if you want to check that out or if you want to have that at the ready, that is also in the chat. But again, you'll all get all of these afterwards as well. So those are the first things, the things to have on hand to familiarize yourself, you know, have some flyers, have that landing page so you can easily share it, have those resources ready. And the next is to invite us. 
to connect with your employers. Because we know that we are the experts in micro internships. And while we're sharing all this information with you, we don't necessarily expect you to be the end all be all experts when it comes to micro internships. We are happy to do our part to hop in to help you spread the word. Uh, so these are some examples of ways that you can easily incorporate us into opportunities to help you do that. And one is by inviting us to your already planned employer events. You know, whether you're hosting an employer summit, if you have an advisory board, some sort of an appreciation event, you know, anything where you've got employers gathering, you've got a captive audience, we don't need to take a ton of time. We can show how easy this is, how effective this is in just a half hour, but we'd love to be invited to have that opportunity to share this with your employers. So you'll see too in the poll, um, if you want to invite us to one of your existing events, that is also an option. Uh, you can see some examples of different schools or different opportunities where companies, or not companies, schools have invited us in the past. Um, so please feel free to brainstorm. And if you want us to be somewhere, we will make sure we are reaching out to you to get those details virtually, of course. We, we are remote folks at Parker Dewey. And the next is to think about involving us with your local chambers of commerce or your workforce development meetings. There are some fantastic organizations out there. You can see on the screen a couple of the ones we're already working with, like the Kansas Department of Commerce, the Greater Akron Chamber, who already know, you know, the players in their local economy. They know the schools that they're working with, including your fantastic institutions. They know where the needs are. And we are always happy to share the word about how those needs can be met with these Parker Dewey micro internships. Um, so involving us with these folks could look a couple of different ways. Uh, maybe you have regularly scheduled meetings already where these folks are gonna be there. So that takes us back to step one of this section, invite us to be there so we can start building those connections and spreading the word. Maybe it's as simple as an email introduction, but wherever you see an opportunity, you know, if you've got that chamber of commerce, you've got that partner who has been fantastic, who's been engaged, but who is talking to you about the challenges they're facing, and you see how micro internships can help, loop us in. We want to talk with them. We want to talk with you. We want to talk with both of you together to see how we can support your mutual goals. Another great resource to loop in is to have us connect with your entrepreneurship centers, your small business centers. Now, to be clear, companies of all sizes love micro internship. The big companies love it because they can get through some of those preconceived notions. They can help students and recent graduates realize, like, you may think we only do this. We actually do a lot of different things. There are roles for you here. But on the flip side, entrepreneurs, small businesses also love it because they often don't have that ability to hire someone, to have someone on the payroll, to figure out all those things. But boy, do they have a lot of needs. You know, they need a specific, you know, process set up. Maybe they need some branding. There's a lot to be done when it comes to building a new business or growing a small existing business. And micro internships are just such a fabulous, flexible support source for these companies, for these organizations. Um, so if you have an entrepreneurship center, if you have a small business center, invite us to connect with them. Again, could just be an e-introduction, could be inviting us to a meeting, but we love explaining to these entrepreneurship and small business centers how this is going to provide them with a flexible on-demand resource that is simultaneously going to give your students and recent graduates an amazing opportunity to help these businesses grow. What a fantastic thing to be able to put on their resumes. Um, so we have a couple of examples here. Trinity Christian College has a great program. Um, the UCI Entrepreneur Center has just been fantastic about connecting us with some of their entrepreneur contacts who are trying to build their own businesses and need that on-demand project support. So you'll be able to check out these examples too when you get these slides, but we are just so excited to be part of those conversations. And this is where we get back to the question that I think Brianna was asking earlier, Brianna or Brianna, is what is Parker Dewey already doing? 
And we have a slew of regularly scheduled events. We have a business development team that is reaching out to get folks interested in these events, to come to learn more, to start the conversation. Uh, but because these things already exist, because they're ongoing, it means it's also super easy for you to invite your employers to join us, to join the folks we're bringing in to learn about these things at these events as well. So I wanna do a quick overview of all these different events, but before I jump in, also want to share an email template. If you are maybe feeling from your employers, sometimes what we get from students, maybe they're like, I'm a little emailed out. I don't want a bunch of different emails. Uh, this right here is kind of an example to cover all of these bases for our regularly scheduled events at once. Um, so we're going to review what these different events are, but just highlighting if you want one that's going to kind of cover all the bases at once, that's going to be right here on this slide when you receive these. But let's overview what each of these events is, how they differ, how they might support your unique needs, or one might be better than another for you. So number one, is our micro internship overview for companies. We do these once a month. Um, so our next one is scheduled for next Thursday. I believe that is the 14th. And if I click, yes, scheduled for Thursday, March 14th. This link is evergreen. So this is gonna be the link every single month. We just update the date and it will take them to the most recent event. But what these are is just a 30 minute overview. We explain what micro internships are, how they're going to benefit companies, how they're going to expand their reach, how they're going to allow them that on-demand option. And we do a demo to show them just how easy it is to get started with these. Um, so if this is something where you know you've been talking to a company, you think they'd be interested in this, but you know they need someone to walk them through it. They need something live. They just need to hear a little bit more directly from us invite them to this. We've got an email template to make it easy. Uh, so you'll just put in your institutional information, click the link, you'll see the date and time for the next one. Have them join us. You don't have to do any setup for the event. You don't have to do any promotion beyond that, although you're welcome to, but it's super easy for you to invite companies. The next step, is our state of campus recruiting webinars. We do these typically about quarterly. Um, our next one is actually happening very quickly. It is going to be happening tomorrow um, from noon to one. And what we do at these events is we talk about the state of campus recruiting. What challenges are people facing? Uh, what unique things have they been doing? Sometimes this involves talking specifically about micro internships. Sometimes it's more broad and getting ideas from other people. Um, but the topics are constantly changing. So if you have employers who are in the healthcare field, tomorrow's, I know it's short notice, but tomorrow's might be a good one to send them out just a quick little email blast about. Uh, we are going to be having the Associate VP of Academic Strategy and Engagement from HCA Healthcare talking about some of the things they've been seeing. Uh, I think there's going to be a little bit of conversation about how they've used micro internships as well. So encourage you not only to attend yourself, if you want to register, I'll put the link for that in the chat, putting in tomorrow's event. Um, but also, we've got a template, again, that makes it easy for you to invite your employers. You can just put in a little bit of the details from that link. You can send it out, and then hopefully they'll join us and get some of this great information as well. Uh, another is a series of different webinars, uh, and this is about using micro-internships as a tool for accessing target demographics. Because I know a lot of you said, that's what we're hearing from our companies. They want to engage specific demographics and they're doing some of the things we're telling them to, but they're struggling to engage those specific folks that they're looking for. So what we do with this series is we highlight a different demographic for each one. And we have panelists, uh, both from the student perspective, as well as the company perspective, talk about why this works, why this is appealing, why this is accessible. So just to show some of the demographics we've already covered, we've talked about student athletes, you know, with their practice schedules, with their game schedules. Traditional internships aren't always accessible, so we've talked about that. We've talked about first and second year students. Our student sentiment survey showed that more than three quarters of them are thinking about their career options by the time they're sophomores, if not before. So those companies who are waiting until junior or senior year are missing out on a critical opportunity to engage students, not only when the students really want them to be there, 
but also when the students are most open to a variety of career options. So in this, we heard from a student who is engaged in micro internships as a first and second year student who talked about their experiences in a company who has used micro internships to expand their talent pipeline. We've talked about engaging non-traditional students who, you know, have commutes, they have schedules, they often have jobs. We've talked about liberal arts students. Um, I think a lot of us are familiar with the challenges faced by liberal arts students. The great thing about liberal arts is you could do anything with a liberal arts degree. The overwhelming thing about liberal arts is you could do anything with a liberal arts degree. So micro internships allow those students the opportunity to explore and see how the skills they're building in their liberal arts degree apply to real world programs. Um, so just be clear, you can click into any one of these, you can watch the replay, you can read a recap, and you can see what panelists we had, both a student who fell into that category and has used micro internships, as well as a company who has engaged a lot of students from that demographic. Uh, we've also talked about first generation students who often aren't exposed to a wide range of careers that require a degree because their parents haven't had that experience. Micro internships allow them that experience to see careers close up, to explore, and it allows companies a flexible way to engage them. Um, our next topic has not been announced yet, probably going to be international students. Um, so if you are interested in that, you can also click in there and you can make sure you're on the list to receive the details once we have that set up. We also welcome you to take our survey. We'd love to know what demographic you would love for us to focus on next. Um, so if you want that page, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here as well. Demographic webinars. Uh, and just like the other resources, we have templates, both email or if you wanna pop something quick into a newslet newsletter where you can let your employers know this is coming up. Parker D is this webbing, doing this webinar. We know that you have wanted to work with this specific demographic, or maybe you're highlighting the webinar replays. Say, we know that you've talked about multiple demographics that are on this list. Check out these replays. Uh, and then finally, perhaps the one that we recommend the most is hosting a webinar for your employers and for your alumni. And this is something that we see be particularly effective because even though we do our regularly scheduled events and your employers are always welcome to join us at these events, there's something extra compelling about saying this is a webinar hosted by our institution so you can come and learn about how Parker doing micro internships specifically allow you to engage institution named talent. Um, so what we see here on the screen was the registration page from, for example, UNC Chapel Hill. So they sent out to their employers, to their alumni, anyone they thought might have a professional project need and said, hey, come learn about Parker doing micro internships, learn how this is going to make your life easier, how it's going to allow you to get on-demand project support, and how it's going to allow you to engage our students in a way they really want to be engaged. And because this is a webinar specifically for your audience, we also make sure if we're doing one of these for your school to highlight when we do the demo. And don't forget, you can create these students specifically for, in this case, UNC uh, Chapel Hill talent. And we show them how they can set that status. Now, because these are one of the most effective ways to engage employers, to engage alumni, to make them aware, we try to make this as easy for you as possible. So what we do to make this simple is one, we set up everything for you. We set up the Zoom event, we set up the registration page, we set up promotional materials, an email invitation template, something you can put in newsletters, LinkedIn posts. And then we send you reminders two weeks before, a week before, the week of, here's what we recommend sending out now, here are your numbers, so you are aware every step of the way and you don't have to create anything from scratch. So all you need to do is send out those materials that we make for you. And then on the day of, you say, hey everybody, here's Parker Dewey. And then we take it from there. In 30 minutes, we explain all the benefits. And again, we remind them that it's super easy if they want these opportunities to be exclusive to your students to put in that setting. Or maybe they are using this as a way to create a pipeline for a longer term opportunity, a traditional internship or a full-time role. They can make it exclusively available to your institution and other schools in that geographic area. And even if the project itself is remote, again, recommended, they know that these are students in the area, and if they do a great job, they can invite them to that longer in-person opportunity that might be following if your student does a great job.
as again, over 98% of the time, micro interns do. So if this is of interest, I want to draw your attention to the poll again. We've got an option if you'd like to host a Parker Dewey webinar for your employers, give that a click right now. Uh, we would love to create that opportunity and again, get everything set up for you. And then the final option is just reminding folks, little things here and there, and we've got a lot of content to make it easy for you to do it in our marketing toolkit. Um, so there is a lot here. I'm going to go ahead and put the link to the overall marketing toolkit. And again, you don't have to save these links for the chat. It's just if you're like me, you like to look at things live while we're talking about them. Um, but we're going to review some of the resources that are already in the toolkit that you can use really at any time of year. So when it comes to social media, you know, maybe you have a LinkedIn page where you tend to have employers following, maybe you have a group of some kind, maybe you have some sort of employer portal, whatever you use to engage regularly with your employers, we have some content and reminders that you can use to make sure that they don't forget about micro internships. One of the options is client quotes. Uh, so these are quotes that we've got from a variety of companies that talk about how they use micro internships. You know, this company said straight up, you know, we had students we found through Parker Dewey, we would have never gotten through traditional recruitment methods. So this helps remind those companies that are working with you, if they say we're struggling to find those demographics, well, have you tried micro internships? These come with already made recommended captions, recommended hashtags, making super easy for you to share them. Uh, so we've got quotes, and then we've got some other reminders that might be best suited for different times of year. Some of these are going to be able to be used at any time. So for example, if you've got alumni that you know really want to give back, they want to create connections, this highlights, well, micro-internships are an efficient way to mentor a student through a project, and it's also going to help you at the same time because you're getting that project support. Alternatively, if you want an example of something that's better suited to a specific time of year, uh, we do tend to see a lot of posts at the end of the fiscal year. Companies have a lot of things they're trying to wrap up with a limited amount of time, and a lot of these are fantastic projects to get support from a micro intern on. It also tends to work out really well because they have a little bit of a break, the students do, at the end of the fiscal year, typically at the end of the calendar year. So this is a nice reminder for your companies, you know, if you're overwhelmed, if you need some help, you're like, I want to get into that holiday mindset, but I've got way too many things that aren't the best use of my time between now and then. This is an example of a reminder you can put out there for them to be able to get some support from your students. Uh, we've also got newsletter content. So some of you may have a regularly scheduled employer newsletter. Maybe you do it quarterly. Maybe you do it once every six months. But we recommend however often you do it. I mean, if you're sending something like weekly, you don't need to go that hard on it. But if you are suing something quarterly or every six months, Every newsletter, include a little reminder about Parker Dewey. We've got quick little blurbs, so you don't have to write anything from scratch. You could put just the little blurbs with a button to your employer page, or you can include some of those social media examples. You're welcome to use them in a different way, but it's just nice for you to have that reminder out there to companies that this option exists and to continue to remind them. And then we also have email templates. Now, we highlighted the social media and the newsletter first because we know folks are getting a lot of things in their inboxes, but maybe with your employers, you found that that's how you tend to get the best results. And if that's the case, we have plenty of email templates to you to use. Um, it reminds them, you know, this is what students want. So you don't have to write about that from scratch. It makes it clear. Uh, we also have topics like highlighting the summer interns. You know, maybe you meant to post a summer internship and whoops, you forgot to do that. It's a little bit too late now, company. But don't forget, you can post a micro internship at any time of year and have a student working on it within a matter of days. So these are templated. So again, you don't have to create anything from scratch. I'm trying to make things as easy for you as possible. And something else you might consider is including Parker Dewey in your sponsorship packages. Um, so I come from a career services background myself. Sorry for not already mentioning that. So very familiar with the importance of the career fairs and with making those sponsorship packages something that is going to be appealing to companies. And there's only so many places you can put a logo, although I was impressed. I feel like every year we found new places to be able to put logos as a result of sponsorship packages. 
But micro internships and adding these Parker Dewey micro internships as a benefit to your sponsorship packages is something you can do that's a little unique, that is going to be extra appealing to companies. Because for those companies who are thinking, okay, I've come to the career fair before, they're great events, but you know, I'm always looking to engage a specific demographic that I don't see there. And I know some of you said that that's a challenge that your companies have been coming to you with. This is a great way to say, well, company XYZ, not only are you going to get all those benefits you already get from the career fair, but don't forget with this sponsorship package, there are already, you know, maybe one or five micro internships included, depending on how you split things up. So that means not only are you going to get all those great connections they were already going to get at the career fair, but these micro internships that they've already paid for as part of the sponsorship package are also going to allow them a super easy way to engage with those students. Again, the first generation students, the non-traditional students, the student athletes who maybe couldn't make it to the career fair. Or maybe depending on when you are having them register by, they use these micro interns as a way to generate traffic. For the career fair. You know, with XYZ sponsorship, you get a micro intern that's going to do campus club research for you that is not only going to identify three on campus organizations that would be a good fit or tend to have the type of students you're looking for, but they'll do a brief, you know, five minute presentation to those organizations about who your company is and why you should visit their table at the career fair. Again, it's something innovative, it's something unique. It's something to get your employers excited about a specific sponsorship package option. And it's totally up to you how you do it. Um, so we've got some examples here. These are just examples. Again, there is flexibility. But maybe if you've got a $5,000 sponsorship package, and we know there is a range. We know some, like the schools I've worked with, were far smaller than that. So if you're looking at that and going, well, that's just not where we are. Don't worry about that. We know there's a range. This is just an example. Um, but maybe 2,500 of that is going to the school. Maybe 2,500 is going to fund five micro internships. If you are smaller scale, maybe your sponsorship packages top out at $1,000. You know, maybe 750 goes to the school and 250 goes to fund a smaller micro internship where they know they're going to get to engage with a student in that way. So there are lots of different options to think about. And again, just going to refer your attention to that poll. If you're thinking about your current sponsorship packages and you're thinking, okay, this sounds like an interesting way to mix them up, to get companies excited, to get more companies to buy some of these packages, then hit that button saying you're interested in that when you go to submit at the end here. Uh, and then a final recommendation, kind of in way or having them be the middle person, involve your faculty and alumni and have them help you in spreading the word to your employers. Um, so faculty, you know, they've got those connections directly with students, so use them for that too, but they often also have a lot of great employer contacts. So we have a faculty launch toolkit in our greater marketing toolkit with resources to help you help them spread the word. So I encourage you in particular to check out this email template. It's something you can easily customize to share with your faculty. It explains what micro internships are, and it also highlights those resources, the other things in the toolkit that they can use. So if they want to put a little insert into their syllabi explaining what micro internships are, it's already written with for them. If they want to talk about micro internships in class, they can download this single slide as is, or they can customize it and be able to share this easily with your students. Uh, it also highlights our regularly scheduled overview for faculty and staff. Um, so we try to do these at the end of semesters, you know, kind of in that time between when final grades have been submitted and when folks might be taking a little bit of vacation time. So their next one is scheduled for May 21st, but they can see the recording and slides from our last session at any time. This goes over all that basic information for how micro internships work, as well as some of the basic resources for sharing both with students and with companies. So if you have folks on campus that engage with either of those parties, with students or companies that you think would be beneficial to have on your team when it comes to spreading the word about micro internships, you know, whether it's faculty, whether it's staff, whether it's academic advisors, whether it's deans, whatever it is, encourage them to come to this event. And again, you will get that link if you want to invite folks in these slides. Um, the link for that Parker Dewey overview is right here. And then alumni. 
alumni are just such a win because they often have a soft spot for their alma mater. They once sat where your current students are now sitting and they know what it was like to struggle to find opportunities. Maybe they didn't have transportation. Maybe they were a non-traditional student. Maybe they were struggling to fit opportunities into their schedule. So they learn about this opportunity and they go, oh my gosh, this would have helped me when I was a student. And now I get to provide the help and the opportunity that I didn't have. And because again, they've got that soft spot, there's a good chance they might even feature that project exclusively to students from their alma mater. So please, whatever resources we have covered today to engage employers, they are either already in the toolkit modified or could very easily be modified to also engage your employers. Um, so, Invite us to, another option is to invite us to, if you have alumni board meetings, if you have alumni council meetings, don't forget about those when you're considering different events you could invite us to. And just like we've talked about highlighting Parker Dewey micro internships in employer newsletters and in employer emails, don't forget about those alumni newsletters. Don't forget about those alumni emails. Make sure they know about this too especially as graduates of your programs. They are likely working in fields and have on-demand project needs that are going to be of interest to your current students. So don't sleep on getting these folks aware and involved. And there are those links to those templates again to make it easy. Uh, so we are coming full circle here, folks. We are gonna have time for questions as well. But if you are going to, when you look back later, look at just one page here, look at this slide because this links, you know, anything you see here to the specific topic that we talked about. This is the playbook. These are the X's and O's that show you all those different things that you can do that we've talked about today. Um, so as we are wrapping up, I just want to draw your attention to the poll one more time. And we have a lot of these recommended best practices for engaging your employers. So take a look at that. If you wanna have an employer facing page made or updated, option number one, give that a click. If you wanna invite us to one of your employer events, give that a click. We'll follow up based on the poll results to ask for details and make sure we get that going. Uh, if you would like to invite some employers to come to our events, give that a click. We can follow up. We'll make sure you have those email templates regardless of which event you're interested in so you have all your options. If you want to discuss how you can add micro internships to your sponsorship packages, and to be clear, you don't need to talk to us to, to do this, um, but if you want to give it a click, we can offer our support. We're happy to have a conversation. Um, or if you just need to think about it, you can clarify that too. It looks like about half of you have participated participated in that poll so far. So we'd just love for everyone to take a minute, think about which of the things we've covered today would be helpful, and let us know so we can be a support system for you as you're thinking about these options. Um, so with that, we'd love to open it up for questions. If you have questions you want to put in the chat, please feel free. Alternatively, if it's something it'd be easier to ask verbally, raise your hand. I'll be happy to unmute you. Um, but while we are waiting for those questions to come through, just want to say thanks so much to everyone for, for taking the time to spend with us today to brainstorm and look at these different recommended options for engaging your employers and your alumni. We are so excited at Parker Dewey to do everything we can to spread the word, and that involves helping all of you spread the word. So we really appreciate your attendance today.